Hello, today we are gonna be talking about product options on BigCommerce. This video is gonna be the first of a whole series that I do around product options. And I'm gonna try and consolidate 80 to 90% of what I think that you guys need to know all in this first video. And then we'll go through some super advanced topics in a couple of videos later on in the series. Before we get started, my name is Cal. I'm an e-commerce developer. Uh, I've been building on BigCommerce for well, 14 years at the time of this video, so I'm getting the hang of it. I'm also a store owner just like you, and uh, I'm here to help you guys out. Again, in this video, we're going to talk about all the basics that you need to know. We're going to just deep dive because even people that I see having run stores for a couple years on BigCommerce still don't know the full functionality uh, of, of these product options and what all they can do. So I'm going, to, I'm going to just turn over all the rocks. Okay, let me share my screen, and we'll get started. Okay, so this is a demo store that I have set up. The product options are very important to get your head wrapped around. They, there are definitely some nuances with them because what you're trying to do in a nutshell is take product pages that are similar or products that are similar and group them all into one product page. For example, if you are selling t-shirts and you have small, medium, and large, red, blue, and black, right? Then you don't want to have nine separate product pages, one for every possible variation combo in that. You just really want to have one product page where people can choose small, medium, and large, and they can choose red, blue, or black, right? And so there are definitely some considerations because what you're doing is you're taking those nine SKUs and consolidating them down to one singular page. And that can mean that you're going to have fewer product cards in your product grids. It also means that you're going to have fewer in URLs to index. And that might be a great thing. And it might be something that's not great. But I'm going to start out by showing you guys what product options are and how to build them and the different types of product options. And then we're going to talk about some of the, the complexities and nuances around that. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over, um, you know, understanding the different types of product options. We're going to go through every single type that there is. We're going to talk about variants and modifiers. We're going to talk about, um, you know, setting up product options. I'm going to show you guys how to do it. We're going to go over uh, configuration and best practices, limitations of product options. It's, it's going to be a couple minutes, this video, and that's okay. We're here to go over everything that you guys want to know and everything that you need to do to set up your big commerce store with product options. Okay, so we've kind of talked a little bit about, you know, why they're important and a little bit about the considerations. We'll come back to that later in this video, but let's talk about the different types of product options that are available. And so let's see, let's, let's just get right into the back end here and say on this product, let me clear this out. Save variants. Okay. So in this product, which is called test, right? And this is on the V3 product UI. I'll talk a little bit about V2 versus three V3 in a later video, but long story short, if you've, if you've started your big commerce store in the last two plus years, you're already on V3. Don't even worry about V2. If you're on V2, you probably know it already. And again, I'll have a specialized video just about V2 and V3. So you should have a setup, a product page setup that looks like this. This is the V3 layout. And you can come down to variations and customizations. Now, uh, I think this is a little bit confusing personally because there are variations which are here. And then there are customizations which are really also called modifiers. And just think of customizations and modifiers as exactly the same thing. You have rules that apply to modifiers. You don't have rules that apply to variants. So that's one thing that's a little bit different. But the main types of variants and modifiers that exist and are used are drop downs, radio buttons, rectangle options, text fields, and swatches. There are more than that, but these are the main ones. Um, before I get into actually building these with you and showing them uh, to you individually, I want to talk about the differences between variants and modifiers because this is something that's really hard to get your head wrapped around initially, right? A variant is something that would create a different version of a product that would require a different spot on the shelf. So your t-shirts in the t-shirt example, for example, you're going to have smalls, mediums, and larges. So your smalls, mediums, and larges are all going to be a different SKU. And so if you had these all sitting on the shelf, if you're not doing, you know, uh, what do you call it? Print to print to garment, direct print, um, print on demand. Sorry. If, if you're not doing print on demand, then you would actually have these 
products pre-made and they'd be sitting on the shelf. And you'd have the smalls in one box and you'd have the mediums in one box and you'd have the larges in one box. And each one would have a separate SKU. And so these are different variants. So a variant is an option or a different version of the product that requires a separate SKU and location in your warehouse. A modifier is something that does not. So for example, you know, if you were going to engrave these, not engrave, if you were going to monogram these t-shirts, right, then, you know, what people get in their monogram, the letters that they choose or the presence of a monogram or not has no impact on which location on the shelf that that t-shirt or whatever the item is, is going to come from. So a modifier does not require a separate SKU. It doesn't require its own location. It's going to be something that is, is modified on the product after it comes off the shelf. And engraving or monogramming is just, you know, one example. It could be, you know, even with something like colors, it could be something where you have fenders on the shelf and everybody gets the same fender, but then based on the color of modifier that they choose, you're going to spray paint it red or blue or black after the fact. So it's the same fender, but painted after the fact versus three separate fenders, a red fender, a blue fender, and a black fender that are all sitting on the shelf prior. That's the best way I can explain variants versus modifiers. It is definitely, you know, something to get your head wrapped around and definitely something that people kind of struggle with at the beginning. But th this is the way I think is easiest to explain it. Variants require its own SKU and own storage location in a warehouse. Okay. Um, some of these options like drop downs, like radio buttons, like rectangles, and even swatches can be found in both variants and modifiers. And then some types of options can only be found in one of these. So let's go through and actually start looking at these variant options. To put a variant option in place, we're gonna just start with variants, variations initially, and then we're gonna go into modifiers after that. So let's click on add a variant option. Now up here you see that there's two ways to do it. You can add a variant option, or you can add a shared variant option. We're gonna come back to shared afterwards. So let's just start out thinking about normal, good old fashioned variant options like my grandpappy used to have. So when you come in here and you click add variant option, it has you put a name in here and it has a couple suggested you know, names because this is what people use them for most is color and sizes, but it doesn't have to be that. Let's just choose color for right now and then let's look at what's available in the type dropdown. So within variants, we can choose swatch, radio options, rectangle list, and drop down. Now, these are all things that are not multi-select, right? So you have to choose one of these options because again, this corresponds to a specific unit of SKU, right? So if we choose for color, let's say swatch right off the bat, then it gives us some sample colors here. And you don't have to stick to these. If you only have two colors, for example, you can just get rid of one. If you have more colors, you can click add another value and it'll let you stack a whole bunch of them in here, like a whole bunch. Let's just use, let's just do three of these. So we have green, red, green, and black. And in the drop down here, we have, it's automatically selected to one color, but there are also three other types of swatches that you can use. So two colors, three colors, or pattern. So let's start out by just choosing a red here in the color picker to represent the red. So this is going to be the, the color that actually shows up in the swatch. And you can make one default if you want, but you don't have to. Now let's choose a different one. Let's choose two colors right here and say that this is green and black. Or green and black. Now it gives us two swatch colors that we can use. And let's just go ahead and choose a green. And you can paste in specific hex codes if you want. But I'm going to just use the color picker. Okay. Now, oh my gosh, there's a three color option too. Now people don't usually use these three colors and two colors because this is a little bit uncommon. But just want to show you guys what you can do. So I'm going to choose black and yellow and black, even though that's two colors repeated. Um, Let's choose black, and then yellow, and then black. Okay, let's put in one more, and let's see what this pattern thing does. Okay, it lets you choose a file, and it brings up your 
your downloads folder here. Let me find one here. I think I had one. Yeah, sample mugs. So I'm going to choose this image, and it actually lets you uh, upload an image. I'm going to choose, I'm going to say red mug. Okay. So we have like one of everything here. Just within swatches, you see that there's so much potential. Um, so we have a red one color, we have a green and black two colors, we have a black and yellow and black three colors, and then we got a red mug pattern. Oh my gosh. You can click save and then save again. And then let's click this to go to the front end and check it out. Oh my gosh, look at this. So we have <laughs> the red singular swatch, we have the green and black, and you can see that this whole thing is just one clickable swatch, just like that. And you can see it says green and black by default, or it says red by default. We have the black, yellow, black, and then we have a mug. So this obviously looks super crazy wacky. You wouldn't want to do all three of these things at once. But, you know, if you had some things that were two colors and you want to do a series of two-tone two two swatches, you could totally do that. If you had a bunch of singles, you could totally do that. If you had a triple, you could do that, or if you had just images, right? So like, say we wanted to come back here and say, let's just change this to be all images, right? So with these, with these mugs that I have in my mug examples, I had a couple different colors, which I could totally do with, with color swatches using hex codes. But what if instead I did it with patterns and I just chose all of these to be patterns? I choose the green mug for the green, I get rid of this and do blue and change this to green. Let me choose the blue one here. Save variants and save the product. And now if I come back to the front, look how good that looks, right? So the image swatches alone are a pretty cool feature. And you can see that even though I'm, I'm uploading bigger, bigger images of this, when I hover over these, I see like the full size image or at least a bigger image. Now you can change like how big these show up using variables in your theme settings. Um, some of the cool swatches like the two, two tone and the three tone swatches, if you have a developer do some styling with those, they don't have to look like side by side blocks. We did, we did a thing one time where we kind of combined the blocks and then we made them circular so they look like a circle with like one of the colors in the top left corner and the other color in the bottom right corner. It looks really cool. So these are just some of the native things that it can do right out of the box. And we're just looking at the first option type, right? We've just looked at color swatches so far. Now, when we saved those, when we saved that variation and it came and it took us out of the variant screen, which is this, and it took us back to the product screen, which is this, you can see that it ended up creating a whole table here. And what it does is it creates, for variants, it creates a, a line item in the table for each variant possibility there is. So right now we created one option with three choices, so there's a total of three lines here. Now each, each time we do this with variants, it automatically assigns a skew to it. So based on the, the parent skew here, which in this case is test one, you can see that it assigned, or what would this be called? Appended, postpended, I don't know what the word is, but it, it added some code here to the end of this to create a unique SKU. And it basically took it from the value that we used, okay? So in this case, it took RE from red, it took GR from green, and uh, it looks like it created this SKU before we changed it to blue. So it pulled RE out of red and red and blue or whatever we had in there previously. Um, now, it automatically has a price field. It automatically has a name of the variant, which is what we put in here. And it has this spot here where we could put an image. Now, with the images, let me just, uh, what is this? Let me just call this up and show you guys how cool this is. Where's me mugs? Simple mugs, okay. So with this table, because it's got this little placeholder where the mugs are, let me show you this first of all. When we come back here to the front end, if we select this, it just says red here. It just says green here. It just says blue here. But what a lot of people want is they want it to actually change the image when you select it so people can see the image that they're selecting. So. 
what you could do is you could drag this red image into the red spot. And you could drag this green image into the green spot. And you could drag this blue image into the blue spot and then save it. Come back here and refresh. And now when I choose red, there you go. Took a second to, to hit, but when you choose red, it changes the product image to the red one. So that's where this is coming from. And all this is built in with what we've seen so far. Okay, so we could also come in here and say, okay, the default price is 10, 10, but this, for this, oh, yeah, yeah, for this one, we can say this, uh, this one right here, which is the blue one, is actually going to be 12. Okay, let's go back to the front end now, test this out. Okay, so red is 10, green is 10, blue is 12, y'all, is 12, just like that. All right, now, if you wanted to override what it comes up with here in the SKUs, you can, just like that. You just double click into this field, type over it, good to go. If you want to make something not purchasable, you can uncheck it just like that. Okay, let's move into our next type of variant. So let's click back in here. We're gonna add another variant option. This time, let's do size and let's choose, uh, let's choose rectangle list. And now let's make these mugs 12 ounce or 18 ounce, 18 ounce, just like that. I'm gonna remove this one uh, let's see, do we want, let's have a space in there. So 12 space OZ, 18 space OZ, and let's click save. And first of all, I'm going to click save again, and then we'll look at it on the front end. Actually, let's look at it on the front end, and then we'll come back to the back end. Okay, save, look at it on the front end. And this is what rectangles look like. This is this is really probably my favorite option overall. Uh, I always default to use rectangles. So it takes the options that you've that you've chosen and it, it exposes them instead of putting them in a drop down where you have to click into the drop down to see them. It exposes them and it puts them on the same line. And if there's so many that it you know runs out of space, it'll wrap to the next line. So I think this is kind of a nice compact way of choosing some stuff, right? So you can choose red, you can choose 12 ounce, and you can add it to cart. Um, when we come to the back end, we notice that it clearly added some extra lines. And while we only added well, while we only added two variant choices, you realize that now we've got six lines, and it's because we have three possible variations of the first with two possible variations of the second. And three times two is six, so this is why we have six lines. You can see that it also actually updated our SKUs, so now we can't just have a test one re. For both sizes, we have to have a test one RE-12, which has taken the first two characters of 12 ounce, and a test one RE-18. And you notice when it did that, it actually wiped some stuff out. So it wiped out our images, and it wiped out our pricing, because it basically just rebuilt this whole table. And it doesn't know really what to carry over from variations that really don't exist anymore, right? Because a test one RE doesn't exist because now it's a test one RE 12, test one RE 18. So you really want to get your options all in here before you start putting all your images in and messing with your price. Um, but you can see it's going to, it's going to end up creating more and more listings on the table. So let's go ahead and create some more options so we can get kind of one of everything on here. Let's put a, let's put radio buttons on there to say handle. I don't know why you wouldn't want a coffee mug without a handle, but let's put uh, no as a choice and yes as a choice. All right, and you can see it doubled the size of our table because now we're three times two times two, right? And let's put in the last type of variant, which was, what was it, drop down. Um, what are we gonna say in the drop down? I don't know what to say in the drop down. Let's say uh, uh, <laughs> rubber base. <laughs> don't know. I'm running out of stuff here on the coffee motif. And let's say no, and let's say yes. 
I'm going to put rubber base question mark. Okay. Maybe we're going to dip the base in rubber or something. I don't know, man. Um, all right. Now we have a whole mess of stuff on our table, right? You can see we're getting a little bit out of control. But let's click save and let's look at it on the front end and see what all this stuff looks like. So we've got one of every type of variation. This would never happen in real life, but we have, we have our images, we have our rectangle options, we have our radio buttons, and we have our drop down. And drop down is always going to say basically view options in here unless you choose a default. Um, and this is basically how it looks. Now you see there's a star next to each one. That's because we did not mark anything as unrequired. If we want to come back in here, let's see here. Oh, they're all required because it's variants, right? And so you have to make a choice so it knows which item to choose from, right? So if it's a variant, it's got to be it's got to be required. That's just how it is. Um, but you can see that it created a whole mess of stuff here on our table. So we have this whole chunk of reds, we have this whole chunk of greens and all the different sizes, and it says yes, no, yes, no. And you can see that it got a little crazy here in what it named these yay yay and no no and no yay and yay no and again this is this is not a real world example but it's it's pulling from these values and so maybe i should have been a little bit more clever in what i named the values if i wanted it to automatically generate these SKUs, um and maybe not and keep in mind you can always come back in here and hard code over these to put whatever the SKU is that you want it to be but you know what it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to do that so ideally, it would be great if the SKUs that Big Commerce generated for you would work out to prevent you from having to hard code over these. Now, if you're using suppliers SKUs, then you know it is what it is. You can end up having to put all these in here. Um, but let's say we want to go here and say all the 18 ounces are going to be 12 bucks. One thing that's cool about this table is you can see I have 12, 12, 12, 12, 18, 18, 18, 18. And what you can do is you can drag down on this just like a spreadsheet and say, okay, that whole block is 12s. And here we have another 18. So we can say, you know, this whole block is 12s, et cetera, et cetera. Um, just like that. So I have four blocks of $12 ones for the red 18, the green 18, and I'm sorry, I have three blocks of 12s, I can't count, but the blue 18. So we've got all of our pricing right. And we can come back in here and drag the colors. Where's my, it's not it. here we go. Here's my reds. Here's my reds. So I can drag my 18 in here. Let me just scoot that so I can do these one after another. I'm not going to do all of them, but I want to do just enough of them that you guys can see. This is basically what it is. And, and believe it or not, this is like way faster than the way this worked on V2 and the way this worked on other systems. You know, to just be able to drag these in here one per SKU is pretty cool. Okay. Um, again, I'm not going to do all these. I'm going to do just one of the green ones here, this green 12 ounce no-no. Okay. And yeah, so any of the reds we choose, here's something to note is that the color swap that I put in here to show this red, when you choose red 12 ounce, no, no, I've chosen red 12 ounce, no, but it still hasn't come up. And it's because we haven't chosen all of the variants and you have to choose all of these variant. You have to make all of your variant choices for it to know which actual skew that you're pulling because until I made that final selection it doesn't know what skew I'm I'm getting right you can see here it still shows the parent skew until I make that final selection right now it says test one re12 no no and if I go to green now it shows the green but if I chose one of these other variations on the green because I haven't put in all the additional green pictures it doesn't have that picture to swap in so this is kind of something to understand is that 
for it to understand that this is that this is the exact product that you're getting and that this is the price until you make all these variant choices that are all required your selection is not dialed in yet because your selection is not dialed in the image swap the pricing the skew none of that stuff applies yet until it knows which one you're doing right but that's kind of you know one of each so you guys can see what they all look like so swatches these are swatches with patterns but they could easily be swatches with hex codes or whatever rectangles radio buttons and drop downs those are those are four your big ones right the only other big one that we are missing is a text field which is a modifier so we'll come back on modifiers here in a minute let me actually consolidate out some of these. I'm gonna get rid of the handle and the rubber base just to make this a little bit more manageable. And so we've gone back to, you can see it like doesn't know what to do since we removed some options. So I'm gonna delete this and you can go back into configure options and save and save. And when you do that, it just reapplied all of our SKUs because it's gonna rebuild the table, okay? So let's choose 12 and 12 here to again make our, oh, I'm sorry, I did that on the wrong line. So I'm going to make my 18s be, uh, my 18s are going to be $12, right? Any of the 18 ounces, just like that. Let's go back to the front end. And I want to show you something. Okay, so the red, and you can see it hasn't swapped in the color yet. Oh, did I apply my colors? No, I didn't. Let me apply my colors back. So my red, and my red, and my green. You guys would be wise to keep your variants named properly and saved properly in case you ever need to reload them in the future like this. This isn't something that happens a lot unless you're making a video for the internet. Okay, uh, let's see, I click save. Let's go back to the front end. And again, when I choose red, it doesn't show the red image swap yet because the size is also required. And so I'm gonna choose 12 ounce. At that point, it knows that we've chosen this, this what is represented by this image. It knows that we've chosen what's represented by this price, and it knows that we've chosen this uh, SKU, basically. And if we change our mind, it changes the SKU, it changes the price, it changes everything, right? Let me click Refresh. So we've arrived at our product page with no, with no required options chosen. And you notice that it says up here, it comes from 10 to 10 to 12 bucks, you know, and this is what it's going to show when you have a price variation. It's going to show the lower range and the upper range until people make a choice, right? So it shows as soon as I choose red and 12 ounce, now it knows that it's going to be 10 bucks, but maybe you don't want to show this, this range on the product page. Okay. Well, the only way to not show a range is for the product page to know what price people are selecting. And so the best way to do that is to use default choices and say, we're gonna choose red 12 ounce, for example, to automatically show that this is the red 12 ounce, and then it'll automatically know the price. So let's go back into the back end and click configure options. And here's where we use this little radio button here to say this is the default. Now, if you wanna undefault it, you can actually click it and it'll undefault it just like that. But in this case, we want to choose red and we want to choose 12 ounce. Let's save variance and then save the product. Come back to the front end and refresh. And you know what? Now it knows that we're choosing the red. It knows that we're choosing 12 ounce. And as a result, it's going to show the lower end of that price scale. Now this is going to be the same thing that happens by default on your product card. So the way that it looks in the, uh, the category grid. It's going to show range because it doesn't know if people are getting the expensive version or the cheap version. So again, if you choose, if you use the defaults to make your required product selections, then it knows where to start people at. And if they want to upsell to the 18 ounce, it's just going to bump it up two bucks. No big deal. And so you guys may want to use some strategy here in what you choose as default in order to get 
uh, a default price to show up at the bottom and people can always scale up is what you know you're probably going to have people do but i've seen people go with the more expensive route and have them scaled down which i think is weird but hey man everybody's different all right so that's how we do defaults let me show you the next thing let's say we have a whole bunch of mugs and they're all done in 12 ounce and 18 ounces here's where we can do a shared variant option so what i'm going to do I'm actually going to delete this, which is going to remake my variant, variant table one more time. I'm going to click Save Variants, just save the product, and we're going to come back to the product. But in the meantime, let's go to this link over here that says Product Options. This is where we can create a global or shared option. And up here it says Shared Options and Shared Modifiers. In my opinion, they need to get their naming correct because this should say shared variant options and this is fine with me saying shared modifiers or shared customizations but that's what these two tabs are is variants and modifiers okay we're going to click share add a shared option we're going to choose we're going to say mug size just to kind of keep this more understandable we're going to make this a radio button and you can see that the the choices here are the exact same as they were in the non-global variant that we were that we were adding so we're going to choose rectangle list and we're going to say 12 ounce whoa got got 12 ounce and 18 ounce just like that and again you can click a default right here if you want let's just go ahead and click 12 ounce as the default and save now you have a display name this is what's going to show on the uh, product page. So maybe you actually just wanted to say size on the product page, but we want to call it something internally that would uh, separate this from maybe shirt sizes or some other size that we would use across different types of products. So we're going to say this is just called size. We're going to leave it as mug size. Click save one more time. And let's go back to that product. So view, test. All right, and let's go back down to variations, configure options, and this time we're going to do add shared variant options. Okay, now here it shows you all the stuff that you have. If you have a ton of shared options, then you may have to do a search to find it. But in this case, I only have one for the whole store. So I'm just going to click that and say add. And now look at that size rectangle list 12 ounce 18 ounce just like we had before except now when i hover over this stuff like when i hover over this name you see it gives me the little ghostbuster sign meaning we ain't afraid of no ghost or we can't change this it's not changeable when i click over this stuff i well i can't click anything here when i click over these values more ghostbusters 12 ounce 18 ounce denied even the default over here, which I think my head's blocking on the video, but even the default, I can't change any of that stuff. It's because global or shared variant options are not meant to be changed on a product by product basis. This is the strength of them. It's creating one variant that you can use many, many times and be consistent with. So if you're going to have 100 mugs that all come in 12 ounce and 18 ounce, just make one shared variant option and apply it a hundred times instead of creating a hundred of these from scratch, which may cause you to, you know, you know, fat finger something and spell something differently on one product for, for whatever reason. So the, the global or the shared variant options makes it really easy. Cause now all I got to do to configure this is I set it up one time in the product options screen over here. And then I go into my individual products and I just apply it to them and it's the same every single time. So this is really, really nice. That's all I got to do. Now, obviously, if I'm doing this for one product, the global option is not going to save me time. If I'm doing this for 100, it's going to save me massive amounts of time and make sure that I don't fat finger anything. So if I click save, then it again has rebuilt my table. It again wiped out my images, but that's okay. And it created all of my SKUs just like it did before. Let's go ahead and hit 12, 12, 12. And I'm going to go ahead and just put my images in. I swear this is the last time I'm going to do this, at least on the variants. I might do it again on modifiers. We'll see. 
Um, but it's only going to take me a second because we only have six now. Okie dokie. We got nice SKUs. We got nice prices. We got nice images. And all of our sizes have been applied now with a global option set. So on the front end, what's the difference? No difference whatsoever on the front end. <laughs> but... It's a big difference on the back end if you're if you're doing this for a lot of products and you might be so i just want you guys to understand the difference between global and not global okay so if we choose one of these other ones looks good yeah 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 all right that is everything you need to know about variants about the different variant types let's move on to customizer slash variants or customizer slash modifiers. Customizer slash modifiers. Yeah. Okay. So customizer, customizations or modifiers come in the next section. And again, these are the ones that don't require anything with SKUs and they don't require any difference on the shelf, right? Um, yeah. So let's click add a modifier. Looks very much like the variant screen did. So let's click add a modifier, not a global modifier, but global modifiers come in exactly the same as global variants did in that same screen and everything. Um, oh, it's got a couple of different, uh, a couple of different placeholder ones like, oh, do you need insurance with that? Sure. Let's make a checkbox. Let's look at all the different choices we have here under types now. Holy cow. There are so many. We have the same things that we had here under variants. So we can make a swatch. We can make radio buttons, we can make rectangle lists, and drop downs. Same exact thing as the variants, except again, this doesn't generate unique SKUs for these, right? Let's start with something new. Let's start with, let's just start with the checkbox that they put on. And we can say, yes, yes, I want the insurance. Okay. And you can see there's a couple boxes here. One is to make this required. Make them buy it or you don't want to sell it to them, I guess. And there's also checked by default. We're going to leave both of those. We're going to click save product and let's check it out. Okay. So now it says include insurance. Yes, I want the insurance. And if I check it, Nothing happens with the price, okay? That's because with modifiers, if you want them to affect the price, then you need to add a rule. So let's add a rule and say if the, if the modifier option is chosen called include insurance, then let's adjust the price by adding $5. And you can see that it lets you add or subtract and it lets you add or subtract based on price or percentage of the price. So in this case, I'm just going to make it a flat $5. So if it's chosen, add $5. And you can also say, you know, add, add to the weight. So if this was not insurance, if this was something that would require, you know, something that would actually adjust the weight, you could say adjust the weight. Why would you do that? It's because if you use any kind of shipping methods that, you know, that estimate shipping based on how, you know, the total weight of the order, like all the real-time shipping calculators or the flat rate, shipping tables, um, this, this can kind of be important, not for an insurance option, but maybe something else. So let's say update the rules, click save. So now we have the checkbox and we have a rule that's a tight that's tied to that. So if we go back to the front end and we click add insurance, you can see it toggles it up to $15 now. All right, let's look at some of the other modifiers. Let's look at text field. Um, let's say we want to do, uh, monogram initials, say three letters, then we can say this is a text field. So they're going to input based on a text field and you can say, I want to control the number of characters entered. So let's say at least one character, maximum of three and... Let's say, yeah, okay. So 
Let's see. Did I get rid of the other one that I had? Oh, I think I I think I bulldozed over it. Let's add a uh, include monogram and make this a what was it? A checkbox. Okay, but we're going to actually move this up higher. So include monogram checkbox and. Make the value in, yes, include a monogram. Okay, so we're going to have one checkbox that lets them choose to include a monogram. And then we're going to have a text field that lets them put in the characters of their monogram for up to three characters, just like that. Okay. Oh, and let's add a rule too to say if they include a monogram, adjust the price by $5, just like that and save. Okay, go back to the front end. And, oh yeah, I wanna include a monogram. Absolutely, so that busts it up to $15, and they gotta put in their initials just like that. And then they can add to cart. All right. Now, there are some times here where you would want somebody to not see something like this unless they chose that. And that's called a conditional product option. And for that, that the, the logic that you need for that is not built in, but I'll go over how to get that later on. Okay, let's go and look at some more modifiers. So let's see, we haven't, let's see, we've looked at text field, we've looked at checkbox. Let's put in a multi-line text field. <laughs> let's just put in your bio, okay? And this is where they would put in their bio. We can say, enter your bio as a default value. Although I probably wouldn't do that because if they forget to do it, it's just gonna say, it's just gonna say enter your bio over and over again. You can control the number of characters entered. You can control the number of lines entered. So maybe we want a maximum of a thousand characters for whatever reason. Just like that. Okay, and let's save that. Oh, it's got to be at least one character. Save and save. Refresh a Rooney. Here's a multi line field. You can see that they could drag this down if they wanted to have more space. I don't see many people use that, but it's there if you need it. Let's look at some more. There's so much to choose here in modifier options. Let's look at a numbers only text field. And just go about favorite number, because I'm running out of ideas on why you would use some of these. But if you needed somebody to put in a number, maybe like the number of your jersey if you're selling jerseys. Well, that makes sense. Okay, so no default, no limit on numbers. Uh, you could put a range in here and say it has to be between a range, or you can say, you know, up to 100 or whatever. Um, I'm just going to leave it as no limit. I want people to only allow whole numbers, so I don't want you to tell me your jersey is 10.1, for example. Click save and save. And on the front end. There you go, favorite number, 13. Boom, done. Okay, let's look at some more. Customizations, configure options. Add a modifier, let's add another one. Okay, so we did a date field, okay. Maybe you have like a, uh, a chocolate cookie delivering gift business, right? And you wanna be able to put delivery date. Okay. And you can put earliest date, latest date, date range. Click save and save. On the front end. Here we go. Look at this date picker. I want this on February 1st of next year. There you go. Um, all right. Go back and let's look at some more. I'm going to clear some of these out just because we're getting so many. I'm going to clear them all out, actually. Let's look at the next one we haven't seen. Uh, let's see. Oh, file upload. Okay. So maybe you need somebody to uh, upload their headshot. 
because you have like a, I don't know, uh, a business doing, maybe you're making, uh, what do you call it? Um, resumes for people and you need them to, you're, they're buying a resume service and you need them to upload their headshot. Okay. So we can say only allow certain types like images, or maybe you need them to upload a PDF because you want them to upload like their license or something. Uh, or you can say, you know, whatever you want to send me, which I wouldn't do that. But you can easily say, you know, here's a couple different things and click save and then they'll be able to upload it. I want to show you the last thing. And this is the one that I see. I never see people understand this. This is a pick list option. And let me show you how this works. Say you want to be able to add a, a unit of SKU to the order, right? So you can say, when somebody's buying this, I mean, how can you buy this without a cheese grater or a tiered wire basket? <clears throat> Let's call this option, need this too? And this is a pick list. Now what you can do is you can search for a a product or two and you can say show the image if you want adjust the inventory of these products when purchased and you can say adjust the price based on the chosen option so what the heck is this this option is unique in that what it does is it lets you add one unit of SKU from a different product in the store at the same time that you are selling this item now this only works with products that do not have variations that require you to choose them right so if this was if you were trying to say add a unit of this t-shirt and the t-shirt requires you to choose small medium and large you can't use that for a pick list option now if you had a t-shirt that was available in small and a t-shirt that was available in medium and a t-shirt that was available in large as three separate product products themselves then you could use those because it wouldn't require you to actually go to that item and make any kind of choice in order to put this to cart. So these have to be simple products, right? No choices, just quick grab and grow, grab and go things. Uh, an example that would actually make sense would be if somebody needed to add on like a mount, a mounting kit or something like that, or a replacement bulb, you know, something where you just want to add one extra unit of SKU. Um, you don't have to do this adjust inventory, but if you're counting inventory, I would definitely do that. And you don't have to do the show image, but it's pretty nice. So let's click save and save, and then go and see what this looks like on the front end. How cool is this? Do you need this too? A cheese grater or a wired basket? Do you need a pack of Skittles? Now, I don't, I don't like how the default looks here, where it's like, no, or yeah, or yeah. I, I don't like this. But a developer can make this look a lot differently and you don't have to choose like two different, you don't have to include two different choices there, which I think looks kind of weird. But if I click save and save again, I just tuck one of the choices out, come back here. What we've done on some people's sites is to take the appearance of this where you can either say, no, I don't need any of this stuff or yes, I do. To, to make this look more like a checkbox where you're just checking, yeah, I want this too, I want this too. And if I add this, watch, watch what happens here. So I'm adding a unit of red mug, a unit of, well, a red mug 12 ounce plus a cheese grater. And if I click add to cart, it says, yeah, I'm getting a unit of red 12 ounce and sample oh, cheese grater as well. If I click on view my cart, look at this. This is really cool because it kind of looks like a bundle in that this is just attached in this one liner, right? So it doesn't show me one line of test mug and one line of oak cheese grater. It's just all kind of bundled into the same line, which looks really cool. This opens up so many possibilities, this pick list option. So if you guys are looking to do something weird and you think this might this might be the thing for you, you know, feel free to reach out if you want the appearance to be different. But that's a really, really powerful option to get some additional uh, items into the cart. 
Now, <clears throat> I want to go back and show you one thing here, which is this, that this last choice right here, adjust the price based on the chosen option. That is really cool because what happens if you choose that, I'm going to come back to, I'm going to come back to here and refresh. If I choose that, so I'm looking at the red mug 12 ounce for $10. If I now choose the cheese grater, it adds the price of the cheese grater to the current price of my mug. So for $44.95, I can have the mug and the cheese grater. And like to get really advanced for just one second, if you look at doing some marketing options like using a discount, if somebody if somebody purchases a cheese grater with a mug, then you realize you can actually give them some discounts based on effectively the bundle that they're getting of these two products because you know these two products are going to be in the basket if they add it like this, right? All right, let's move back to the back end. I'm going to remove this, upload my headshot, and click save and save. And just as a quick reminder, uh, you can click, you can create global product options using global modifiers the same way we did with the variants. When you click into shared modifier, it basically is going to give us all the exact same options, which is really, really cool. Looks like it doesn't give us the pick list option for some reason, but all of the rest of them are here. Um, yeah. All right. So now let's talk about some of the more advanced things that you may want to consider. First of all, sometimes it is hard for people to know what to choose in your variants or your modifiers. And so they may require some additional information in order to make their selections. Say this was a, you know, a top and your customers aren't quite sure how tops fit. You may want to include a size chart somewhere on your product page. Um, I've seen a lot of people include a size chart as an additional image in their product. That's one way you can do it. You can also look at, um, you know, including like a tool tip here, which I think can be done with, uh, I think there's a couple apps that can do tool tips, or you can always have a developer like me or my team add tool tips here. A tool tip is when you see the little circle with the question mark or the exclamation mark in there, something just to make people hover. And then it explains in more detail like in a, in a modal hover, um, that can be a really good way to help people use these options better. I think sometimes using patterns or images instead of swatch colors can be a better way to go. Now you can use a swatch color, but then use the image of that. So you could show like a red color in the box here, but show the red mug as the, as the, uh, variant image. So when you choose the red box here, it would show the red mug here, right? Totally doable. Um, we talked about how this auto skew system works in the variants. And I think that this is very nice. It can be annoying for some store owners, depending on whether or not you have SKUs pre-assigned from your vendors. But if not, you know, it is a really nice system how they just automatically do this. The table is really nice, but here's the thing. There is a limit on how many variants you can have. And as of right now, the variant limit is 600. Maybe that'll change in the future, but the variant limit is 600. So that means you can only have 600 lines on this table, which sounds like a lot, and it really is a lot. But there are times when people could go overboard and exceed 600, and that's no bueno. The way to basically add up how many you have is you want to add or you want to multiply the number of values that you have in each choice. So three values here times two values here is six, right? But you can see if you add four or five or six variant options, you might end up getting to that 600 limit. You know, if you have five choices here and then five choices here, you're up to 25. Then if you have five choices in the third option, now you're up to 125. And if you have five choices in the next one, the fourth one, you would actually be up to 625 because that'd be five times five times five times five. And now you'd be over the 600 limit. So you do need to make sure that you need to, that you're going to end up being under a variant limit of 600. All right. So, you know, that may sound 
oppressive to some people, I guess, 600. But here's the thing. You know, there's not really that many times when you need that crazy a number of variants on a page because some of those things that you're using as variants might be able to be used as modifiers and modifiers don't add to the 600 variant limit. And a lot of times the things that you're choosing to make variants, maybe they don't need to be variants. Maybe you actually need to split this out into a couple different products, right? So for example, if I, if this was my real world example and I have red mugs, green mugs, blue mugs in 12 ounces and 18 ounces, in general, I personally lean towards splitting products up based on, based on, you know, if it makes the product look different, I want it to be split into its own product, right? So I may want to make a red product and a green product and a blue product and not combine them, right? And this is preference. And this is not 100% of the time. Like I said, I lean towards this. But I would lean towards actually splitting this up into three products. And the reason is I want the red version and the green version and the blue, blue version all to show up in my product grid. So when I click mugs, I want people to see the red and see the green and see the blue right there. Now, if you have like a ton of products in your store, this might not work for you at all. And, you know, it might work not work for other product types, right? I have some ladders in my store and I don't want, you know, a separate product card for the three-step ladder versus the four-step ladder versus the five-step ladder because, I mean, really, who cares that much? People are just going to see a ladder and click into it. So in that case, even though the three-step, the four-step, the five-step look different, I'd actually consolidate those into one product. So you just want to kind of consider how your users are going to search for your product and, you know, let that inform whether or not you want to split this up into separate products, which may help you avoid the variant limit in the first place. Okay, now I mentioned conditional variants. There is an app, if you want to say, like in the case of the monogram, where we have one choice for do you want a monogram, and then the second choice for what is your monogram. Well, in that case, you're going to want to use an app. Um, let me show you. There's an app in the marketplace that is not my app, and I'm not affiliated with these guys in any way. But their app seems to do pretty good, which is called Conditional Options, I think. Oops. Conditional Conditional product options by Papa Themes. Not a huge fan of Papa Themes, but I do have some clients running this app and it works pretty good. So this lets you say, if somebody has chosen this option, then show or don't show this option. And it's pretty good. Works pretty good. Nobody complains. So I like that a lot. Okay, let me show you something here on the products, on the variants. This is mind blowing and this is new for V3. If I go back into variations and we look at this table that we've been looking at, you know, a hundred times now in this video, what's this button right here? Edit columns. What in the world? Look at this. We can actually add all this additional stuff to the table. Now it's not there by default because this is like super overwhelming, but maybe you wanted to have MSRP for each one of these and say the MSRP on this mug right here is 15 bucks but the msrp on these ones is 20 man what a deal then you can do that and now when we go to the front end look at that msrp this is marked down from 15 bucks you better get it get it right now you can buy this at epic sandbox 5.5bigcommerce.com okay so that's pretty cool you know uh, MSRP, sale price, these are pretty cool. Um, but look at this, weight, width, height, depth. So if you actually have some variants that would actually increase the weight, maybe this is, you know, one ounce for everything, but it's 1.5 for the bigger ones. And that could throw off your shipping, you know? So you can actually add weight as a column right here. You can add width, height, depth, cost, if you have a different cost for some of these. Pretty cool. UPC, MPN, even your bin picking number, which is basically a warehouse location. 
So you can add as many of these as you want and it'll just all show up here. It'll like turn into a side scrolling table if you have too much stuff, but that is super cool. Okay, let's talk about, um, let's talk about inventory for a second here. So with all these variants, this is all about, you know, different SKUs, different locations on the shelf, but how do we, how do we track that with inventory? Well, let's go up to the inventory tab up here. And this test product doesn't say track inventory yet. So if I, if I click this and say track inventory, by default it says on the product level, which means for this SKU of test one, that's how, that's how the inventory is going to be tracked if we have it set to the on product level. So we can say we have 20 units of test one, but we don't really have a such thing as test one because that's the parent SKU. We actually need to track on the variant level now because we're using variants. So when we say track on the variant level, it says manage inventory below. What the heck? Oh my gosh, you added even another couple of, of uh, <laughs> a couple different columns. Let's come back in here and remove our extra columns just so we're not getting too super crazy. And I'm gonna remove MSRP. I'm gonna remove, you can see now stock and low stock show up here. I'm actually gonna remove low stock saying we don't use that. But now we can easily say, okay, we got 12 of this and 15 of this and 99 of this. We need to really sell out of those. And, oh, let's say we got zero of the blue 18 ounce, okay? And let's go to the front end. And it doesn't really show anything different unless we go to buy the blue 18 ounce. And then it's not going to let us do that. You can see it says the product combination is currently unavailable. Now, one of the things people ask me about the most with product options is, can I, can I like gray this out? Can I make it so people can't even, you know, try to choose it so it doesn't have to tell me that the combination is unavailable? Answer is yes. So let's just save this and let's go to settings. Type in inventory. So under products grouping, click on inventory. And we can say, okay, when the product is out of stock, um, we're going to just leave this to do nothing. But when an option is out of stock, which is what we're talking about, we can say hide the option. So in, that, in this case, it wouldn't show us. Let's just go ahead and do that. Saved. So remember, Blue 18 ounce is not available. So if we click on blue, it just removed the 18 ounce. So you never even knew you're missing anything. And if we click back into one of the other colors, 18 ounce shows up again, just like that. But if we come back here and say, when an option is out of stock, mark the option as out of stock and also hide in product filtering results is fine. Click save. Refresh a Rooney. Let's go to the blue one. Bam, look at that. It shows we, it shows it's a possibility, but it's out of stock right now. Now, what you do here is kind of important. If you're going to, there's implications. If you're going to try and have like a back in stock notification, there's an app called, I think it's called back in stock notify, uh, which is very simple. But if you're using Klaviyo for your email marketing, they have a script you can add to your store that will say if an option is marked as out of stock, then um, show like a an email an email opt-in box to get notified when it comes back in stock. So you need to have the option showing here for people to be able to say that that's what they're looking for for that to come up, right? So that's important. Okay, let's talk about how options show up in the cart. So we have our different colors and Let's say we're choosing green 12 ounce and we're getting the oak cheese grater. Let's add it to cart. This right here is called your cart preview. So this just shows you what you just put in your cart. This right here, if you click on view or edit your cart is your actual cart page. And you can see that it still has the option that I, it still has the product that I added in earlier, which is that same SKU but in red. And so it shows up as a different line. And I had the cheese grater on that product. Now, there's this little button that says change here, which brings up a modal that would let somebody change. Let's say we want to change this to the blue 18 ounce and maybe, uh, oh, that's not available, right? So let's choose the, let's choose the red 18 ounce instead of the 12 ounce. 
and let's remove the cheese grater. And we click save. And you could see that it actually updated the cart, which is really, really cool functionality. So that's just something that you can do. If we click into checkout, you'll see that our options show up over here. So now we have the one, the one unit of test in red 18 ounce, the one unit of green in 12 ounce with the sample oak cheese grater, just like that. So that's how it shows up in cart and checkout. One thing, one thing to mention about this pick list option is I kind of described it almost as a bundle and it kind of is a bundle, but it's kind of not. If you want to create bundles, BigCommerce doesn't have a native bundling system in place where you can say, take this item, this item, this item, bundle those into one SKU, and then put that SKU on the page. But this is something that a lot of people need. And the way to get that is actually to use an external inventory management system that will let you have individual SKUs or child SKUs, as well as create parent SKUs and push those parent SKUs in where you can have one SKU inside of Big Commerce that represents three or four sub SKUs, but Big Commerce just looks at it as one SKU of bundle that gets split out once it makes it into the inventory management system. Um, that may sound really confusing, but if you need a bundle, a bundle SKU, a true bundle SKU, this is the best way to do it, no matter what e-commerce system that you're using. So if you need help with something like that, reach out. But in the meantime, this pick list option is a great kind of a shortcut way to get a couple SKUs into, into the uh, store at once. Let's talk about how options affect filters. So if you are on the most basic plan and you click into products, product filtering, you're going to see something that looks like this. And it says you don't get product filtering unless you're on at least enterprise or pro plan. And that's true. Now, you can use third-party apps to get filters before you're on these plans. And those work out pretty good. I really like the, for, for budget, I really like the uh, product, what, what is it called, product filtering by fresh click that's a really good filter system and so if you're on one of the smaller plans and you want filters you don't need to upgrade to pro to get filters use the fresh click product filter system and it's a really really good filter system if you're on one of the larger plans if you're on the pro plan then when you come into product filters you'll see something like this that already has your your standard filters into it and if you are on enterprise then you can have additional filters that are custom filters. Now, your product options can be the values for these filters. So when we talk about, let's go back to this cart and back to our test product. When we look at these colors, red, green, and blue, then this is one of the standard filters. So even on the pro plan, you can have these show up in your filters. So when we look at this, we look at the storefront filters and one of those is color, right? And it says that there's three products that have color available. So because this is one of the standard filters, we can use that. We can disable product filters here. We can make product filters visible or not visible based on what we want you know, to use. But, Let's look at how this looks in the product filters. So this is under, it's under the shop all category. Okay, so if I go to the shop all category, you can see that there's a whole bunch of colors that have been entered, including green. So if I choose green, it's actually showing me items that have values in product options called color of green. And so we see, we see the test product here. Now I don't have a default image, so you can see it shows image coming soon as my image in the product category. If I come back to the product, let's just fix that real quick. You can see it says image coming soon. So let's actually choose an image for this by going down to images and there's nothing here. So let's just go ahead and drag all of my images in here. Now I have to choose one of these as my default thumbnail. So I'm gonna just leave it here on the red one and choose save. 
And if I go back to my shop all category and refresh, hey, look, it shows up now and it shows the red image instead of the green. And that's because we chose this as the default image. So whether I choose green here or we choose red, it's gonna show that default category image here. Now this is why, you know, earlier in this video, I mentioned that I lean towards splitting my products up based on, does it look different, right? So if I chose to have a red cup, a red mug product and a green mug product and a black mug product or blue mug product, whatever it was, then when I chose green, it would show me the green product, which would have a green default thumbnail because it's only a green. And then the red would show me the red product. And so this is this is where we get into some nuances, right? Where you just have to kind of consider your product and how you want it to show in categories. Okay. Now, a little asterisk on there. Some of the adv more advanced search systems like SearchSpring, which costs a good deal more than FreshClick, they have advanced functionality where they can let you have one product and have it actually change to show the variant image depending on what color people choose. So they'll actually swap out the default the default image for the one that represents the, the color variation people are looking for because it's that smart. But man, it's a lot it's a lot more money. So if you're just getting started with big commerce, you're probably not ready for that. But just know that there's there's a there's a point where you can overcome that as a limitation. Okay, so we've talked about um, additional variant dimensions and specifications. We've talked about your max, max variant limit, how options affect filters, um, how product options show in cart and checkout. We've talked about changing options in the cart and the difference between this pick list thing that I showed you guys and bundling and how if you want to do something more advanced than what pick lists do, you might need an inventory management system. Okay. I think this is a good stopping point for this first video. Man, we've gone over so, so much. I'm going to have additional videos. And if I didn't cover something in this video or some of the following ones, be sure to leave me a comment. Maybe I'll sneak some extra videos into this series, but we've covered all of the, all of the different variants, all of the different modifiers, a lot of the nuances, um, in my next videos, I'm going to go over uh, a whole bunch of stuff, including a couple different options to set up product options in bulk and best practices and V2 versus V3. So if you've been looking for an answer on V2, V2 versus V3, I'm going to have a whole video just for that. All right. Thank you guys so much for checking this out. Check out my other videos. And be sure to reach out if you guys need any help. You can hit me up at epicdesignlabs.com slash need help. Or you can join our community here at ecommerceamplifiers.com. And there's a lot more in-depth training there as well. Thank you so much.